What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran giving you that Friday energy on a Monday. And Friday energy, it is indeed. I have the coffee that I drank last episode next to me, but it is very old and I will not be drinking any more of it. Oh, the same coffee? I haven't thrown it out. Has it been sitting in the fridge? No, I'm saying I'm not drinking it. It's just been in the same exact spot. I haven't moved it. It's more about morale. <laughs> you left it out all weekend? Yep. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Very yeah. gross. <laughs> yeah. That, that, I'm, a- that, I'm acknowledging that. That is pretty gross because uh, it's got milk in it. Yeah, no, I'm not touching it. <laughs> it actually doesn't look gross. I won't. I will not touch it, but it does not look gross. I please don't drink that. I won't. Yeah. I won't. No, no Wait, is that's... there a lid on it? Or is yes. it just? Oh, okay. No, no, well, there's a lid on it. Yes. I'm no. I'm sure you left a couple cup, cup of coffees around. Oh, I do that all the time. Before. But mine's black too, so there, there isn't milk in it. Right. True. true. Yeah, I, I think get, when, uh... when it gets to when you put the milk element into it, it's like yeah, it gets kernel. Kern. <laughs> Cur- curdle curdle <laughs> you know i knew it was curdle and kernel is a is no, a popcorn kernel. i knew it was i knew it was curdle and something in me said say kernel instead because no. i was like curdle doesn't seem right your gut was right always trust your gut Shit. it's curdle <laughs> all right well anyways how are we doing um pretty good i feel like it's a it's a it's a busy monday uh it's been a holiday weekend Today is Juneteenth, a lot of federal holiday. A lot of people have off today. Um, definitely want to acknowledge that. Father's Day was over the weekend as well. I hope you guys spent some great time with your dads. I know, Rhea, I don't think you saw your dad, right? Because they were partying it up. Um, I was with my dad. Oh, you were? Yes. They came home on Saturday and I was oh, with my dad on Father's Day. <laughs> I didn't know if they were spending the whole weekend in AC. No, no. They went Friday and Saturday and um, they came home Saturday, which is my mom's birthday. I was on Long Island all weekend, went out on Long Island, haven't been out on Long Island in quite some time. It was a wonderful blast. And then yesterday's Father's Day and I had a barbecue at my house. It was beautiful. It was delicious. My Aunt Debbie, uh, shout out to my Aunt Debbie who made the best pasta salad I've ever tasted in my entire life. I love you, Aunt Debbie. (laughs) (laughs) Big day for Aunt Debbie. Aunt Debbie um, had a huge day yesterday. Her pasta salad was amazing. So good, Aunt Debbie. So good. Noah, how was the how was the wedding? Well, the wedding was really nice. Like, <laughs> also, we showed up, or I showed up, like, while... Because they said wedding starts at 3, but I was like, oh, nothing, like, starts when they say it does. Like, they just want to get there early. I showed up at, like, 3.30, and... But, like, didn't try to, but I was no, like, no, late a, getting we- ready. A wedding... You show up at the time they say. All right. Well, I'm, I'm like, I haven't been to that many like weddings. <laughs> and then I, I was like pulling up behind. There was like a whole ocean view and there was like a parking lot under it. And I was, saw like everyone standing together. I'm like, oh, they're taking pictures. And then I walked in and he was like giving his speech. Like, like they were all standing there and I had to like, and I sat down and the lady was like running. You walked it. in halfway into the ceremony. Yeah, you were Kim and, and Kanye showing up to the wedding, Damn. and I, I. But I was like, I'm not going to go sit in the chairs because I don't want to like make a whole thing. So I sat in the back and sat down, and then the like wedding planner, whoever it was, like, you're sitting on like the sign in, like the sign that people sign in. <laughs> oh. but it was fine. I don't think he saw me show up late, uh, and then it was it was a nice wedding. Yeah. No, you gotta. That sounds beautiful. Honestly, the pictures you posted it looked it looked beautiful, but. A wedding you show up at the time no i know I, next time i will now you learned that's great yeah but that's an early wedding i feel like i've never been to a wedding that starts at three and it ended at like nine because usually i feel like it starts at like six and it ends at like midnight well the ceremony well, the cer- is usually ceremony like is... around three o'clock yeah well they had a lobster dinner which was amazing <laughs> uh, that was like you're trying to move past the, the time thing. you're like but well, yeah. we had lobster it was awesome yeah it really was. And then I had lobster again yesterday, Father's <laughs> Day. I actually had lobster for Father's Day as well. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think like a good lobster. Yeah. I, d- I didn't have lobster. Yeah. <laughs> you, had had, Debbie, you had Aunt Debbie's pasta salad. I had Aunt Debbie's pasta salad, mm-hmm. which is amazing. But I had the biggest hot dog you will ever see in your life. I think you guys got to see a picture of this. And I made, you know, it's messed up. 
these hot dogs were ginormous. So obviously jokes start flying. Like yes. you see these wieners at the table and your mouth drops to the floor because they're so big. They were so big. And so my sister and I couldn't help but make jokes about how big the hot dogs were. And my dad got like really mad. He was like, stop <laughs> it. And then 10 minutes later, he goes, Ro, you want a dog? And 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 puts the hot dog, <laughs> you know, in, yeah, in a, yeah. I said, Dad, you yell at me about making a joke. Where do you think I get it from? You just put the hot dog to mom in front of the entire party. Yeah. And yet I can't make a joke. So Yeah, he that's also, you know, he kind of he kind of stole your joke. He did. He absolutely stole my joke. But I guess, you know, he's the dad. These wieners <laughs> were the biggest I've ever seen. Are you showing us? They're, oh, they're 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 thick. They're, thick. they're not long. They're, yeah, they're thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're they're girthy. Those are um those are like the those, fancy hot dogs. Those look like, like sausages almost. Yeah, yeah. Those, those are, some are thick dogs. Those look those look pretty good. They were they were very good. Oh no, Fran, I, when, uh, are we gonna uh, what were we gonna say? I was gonna ask you about Paul McCartney. Oh yeah. Uh MetLife I, is a disaster. I just want to start with that. Like <laughs> I missed the first like five songs. Because of the traffic. Did you take the subway there or the train? No, I mean, the train. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, because uh, we drove there. It was no insane. driving is the worst. Can't yeah. drive. But great show. Like great show. Like I can't believe that he is 80. Like he, he literally played for three and a half hours straight. Like, you also really did. You also really did think like, hey, someone's going to come out and sing happy birthday to him. And somebody yeah. did. Bon Jovi came out and Honestly, sang happy birthday to him because he brought Bruce Springsteen out because he was like, oh, we have a special guest like local. And I'm like, oh, so Bruce Springsteen just comes here every weekend now. <laughs> and then he like it seemed like he actually didn't know Bon Jovi was going to sing or like was there. I don't know. Yeah. But I I honestly like I'm not a big Bon Jovi guy. I, I like some of the songs, but I, I didn't even recognize him at first. My mom was like, oh, it's Bon Jovi. But he literally just came out saying and then walked off. That was yeah. it. But so great show. Like, and I knew like most surprise. He played like all the hits that you could you could want. So it was good. And he like he 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 like kind of choked up at the end. He's like, uh, and there's only one thing left to say, like until next time. But he like was like kind of crying through that. Cause I wonder when you're 80, I feel like it's like maybe he'll never play. Yeah. You, you never hey, you never know. Yeah. Life is unpredictable. Aww. That's really sweet. That's beautiful. Yeah. I have a show recommendation. Wow for everyone out there that listens to this show because i think they may like it if you're into the young adult romance scene it was a trilogy book series so i think that people have heard of it before but the show came out on prime the summer i turned pretty um at first you got to get through the first episode because the first episode was tough it was like i was like okay this is this is bad this is really bad but i can tell i'm gonna like it so i gotta Mm -hmm. push through and then it was beautiful. Did you finish I, all of it? I finished all of it. Seven episodes. I obviously cried like a baby at the end of it. I cried throughout the series. I thought it was beautiful. And I highly recommend to everybody listening because I think it's right up everyone's alley. I think that everyone would enjoy this show, including you, Fran. I know. I haven't started it. I'm not locked. everyone. Not everyone. I'm saying like the people who listen to this show. Yeah, specifically. I- I um, am a big fan of the books. I have I've read the books. The books are great. Um, And I did see a lot of people talking about that. They've that they changed a lot. And Jenny Han talking about like there were a lot of approved changes for the for the show. But no, I, I haven't really had any time. I haven't really dove into anything else because I'm very into love island uk this season is really good Ah, i think i gotta get the vpn because i saw it was on hulu last night and i was like yes and then i realized that the episodes won't be on until june 23rd and then i was like no yeah it was a shot to the heart it's um it's getting real it was a little bit slow to start i would say but the drama is starting to pick up right now and it's really good i don't i'm not obviously not going to give anything away because not everybody watches on a VPN and a lot of people do watch on Hulu. So I'm sure people are waiting for it to come, but get ready. Cause they're definitely, they're definitely 
laying it on thick. And I will say, I'm curious to see when people watch, if you message me on who you think the producers are trying to mess with the most. Cause there's one person that I feel like the producers are trying to get this person to snap and like do something crazy or really dramatic. And they're just cool as a cucumber. They keep throwing fucking grenades and it's not doing what I think they hoped it was going to do, which is very interesting. Well, I think I need to download the VPN today. I got to text you after this to figure it out because I just can't, I can't wait any longer. I really can't. I'm very, I see the clips and I just scroll past and I'm very interested. It looks very good. Yeah. Um, Something I saw on TikTok this weekend and I may be an idiot, so you can tell me that, but I didn't realize that the Kardashians edit their show. Like they have the beauty filter on their whole show. Like I didn't realize they like, basically face tune their show yeah no i i did know i did realize that i they've saw been, they've been editing it, it they seem to have edited a lot how do you how do you we're know very that? because like we're things are distorted about the last episode the the like chris jenner's phone in front of her face was like curved and so you could tell that they like edited her face and i it just i just picked up on the fact that oh even when you watch tv you mean these like people are not what you lo- think you they look like you no, there's like a beauty every, filter every single shot or i knew that like the the like, confessional stuff it seemed like just insane lighting every single shot i think they do that's crazy it's maybe crazy. that's why it takes so long for the season to come out <laughs> yeah they like I, spend like millions on like cgi i just didn't realize that people do that for tv shows as well like i thought like it is what it is when you film a tv show you look like what you look like that's not the case anymore like yeah tv shows are also edited to make people look like how they don't look so you know that threw you, me for a loop you know what is also, I sent this to you on Instagram, that's also now becoming one of my bigger pet peeves with one of them is Kendall continues to post Instagram stories of her face that she so clearly has a filter on, but she like takes the video with the filter, saves the video, and then re-uploads it so that in the top left corner, it doesn't say it was taken with the filter. Yes, like, and it's very obvious. If you uh, know what those filters really? look like, it's very like, obvious. It, are you really trying to get away with having your like very teeny tiny nose and the big lips? We all know what filter you're using. It's the all, filter everyone on Instagram uses. Although, so just say you're using it. Although I did see her pictures from that day. And it didn't look too far off. And so I was a little confused because I was like, mm, she still looks absolutely gorgeous obviously in the of photos. course she does but she's i'm she's using it first i'm i'd be shocked shocked that, if she's not that because, what confuses me is like why use it when you just don't have to? i know her makeup looks so good but there's something about her upper lip that is so clearly not her upper lip when mm-hmm. that you can tell in real pictures verse these instagram stories which is like if you're going to use the filter just just Posts that you're using right. a filter. All your friends post it. All yeah, your friends are like, posting about the filters. You don't have to hide that you're using the filter. It's such a weird concept to use that you would you take the video, save it, and then re-upload it so no one knows you have the filter. Yeah, it is wild. It, they they are really fooling everybody. Although they are also beautiful in real life, so yep. I guess maybe they're not fool, fooling everybody. Although you know work and stuff, whatever. We don't have to get, dive into it. Yeah. Let's get into the topics for today's episode. Drake released a new album called Honestly Never Mind. Michelle and Nate from Bachelor Nation have announced that they broke up. And Jennifer Aniston and Sebastian Stan did a very interesting interview that has a lot of people talking. We also have a great interview with Hero Finds Tiffin, which was so funny. He was such a blast. Uh, We loved him and he's welcome back on the show anytime he wants to. And we also have a great game of trivia. Yes. You know what I realized is that we didn't have an Austin Butler topic today, but you did bring him up in the interview. So we're good. Thank we're God. Good. Thank I God. We miss, I thought we were going to miss an episode, but oh actually, my God. we're good. Thank God. Yeah, we yes. I mentioned him in our interview with yeah. Hero, which it was. Listen, with the context, you'll get it. It made sense being brought up in the sense. interview. It did okay? make sense. Also, once again, drunk this weekend, made another TikTok about Austin Butler. Like, I yeah. can't. And people are like, you're so obsessed. And it's like, no, yeah, I. 
Yes, I clearly am. Like people are like saying to me, like, you're so obsessed. I'm just like, as if it's like insulting to me. It's like, I am I know. Yeah. obsessed with this man as Elvis. I, I can't, I'm wrapping my head around it and I can't wait for the film to come out. So let's get into it. Starting off with Drake's album. Right now, I got three pups running around my house. We got Norman, we got Romeo, we got Oreo. These dogs are running around everywhere. But most importantly, we need to give them good dog treats for when they're on their best behavior. You know, sometimes they can be a little rowdy, a little wild, but other times they're so cute and you want to reward them. And we are rewarding them with Jiminy's. Jiminy's makes sustainable dog food and treats made from cricket protein. Jiminy's is sustainably made with cricket protein, which uses less water and land to produce and drastically eliminates greenhouse gas emissions versus traditional animal protein dog food. One bag of Jiminy's Cricket Protein Treats saves 200 gallons of water versus the traditional uh, animal protein treats. They include delicious, nutritious plant-based ingredients like sweet potatoes, blueberries, peanut butter, and pumpkin. Norman absolutely loves blueberries and pumpkin. Peanut butter goes without saying he he loves that as well, but he loves blueberries and pumpkins so much. So this is great. It's easy for dogs to digest because cricket protein contains a fiber that's prebiotic, which supports a healthy gut in your dog. We want a healthy gut. So you also want a healthy gut for your dog to learn more and save 25% on your first purchase. Go to jiminys.com slash chicks 25 and you'd use code chicks 25 at checkout. That's J I M I N Y S.com slash chicks. 25 with code chicks 25 at checkout. Drake released a surprise album on Friday called Honestly Never Mind. Everyone was so excited. And usually when you hear that Drake is releasing an album, you automatically think rap album. You don't think anything else but rap album. It was not a rap album. It was a dance album. And it threw everyone for a loop because I think people uh, did the same thing that I did was you just go and listen to the album. You don't look at the genre that it's under. You just go and listen to the album because it's Drake's album and you think rap. Couple songs in, you're like, okay, I feel like I'm at a cabana in Vegas, but I don't hear any rap going on. I feel like bottle service should be coming to my table, but no rap. It's a dance album. And everyone has to accept it as such. Yeah, it's... There, there's going to be critique always. I also think there's sometimes more critique when um, artists do the they go the surprise album route because it has people haven't had time to like warm up to it. I think sometimes when you have a new album and you announce it three months in advance and you have two or three singles come out beforehand people get a sense of what the album's going to sound like and the vibe you're going for. So that when the whole album does come out and your fans listen to it, they're like, Oh yeah, this is what the album was going to be because we've heard the singles and we know this is the route when, when it's just boom, honestly, never mind. Here's the whole album. Enjoy. There's no lead up. There's no nothing that people go in with assumptions, but yeah, it's a, it's a dance album. Um, it's, to me, like I, I haven't listened to it too much. I did listen to the whole thing straight through one time. And there are some ones that I really enjoyed. And then there's also just like, it just feels like one long one dance. Like it just sounds, I just, to me, it sounds very similar to one dance. And yeah, like the-, the beats are all very similar. Like the way that the first song started after the intro, tr- it sounded like one dance. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like that all the way through. There's a couple songs that I like. At first, I was like, what the shit is this? I, I want rap. Um, there is one rap song in there that I like with 21 Savage. I do like that one. Then the so song. He just threw that in at the end. Yeah. Was like, I was oh, like, I'll give, I'll give him one. Yeah, I'm like, you know, why even put this in there as a tease? But also, thank yeah. you, because I did like it. Um, I did enjoy some of the songs. I found yeah. myself grooving a little bit and I was like, you know what? I'm going on vacation well, soon. That's what people are saying. It's like the setting you're in. Like, totally. like I'm going, I'm going to be on an Island soon and I could see myself just sitting there, sipping on some drinks, just casually listening to this music, get a little groove in. And that's fine. You're just not listening to this album to like get yourself hyped up. You're like, I saw a TikTok that was like, 
you guys are lame. When I put on this album, I picture myself on a yacht in Ibiza. And it's like, yes, that is the vibe that this is. It's not what people expect. I, I feel rap. like there's like multiple takes now where it's like initially everyone was like, this is terrible. And now it's like, if you don't like this, you're not cool. Like you just don't <laughs> get it. And that's like what Sharique was saying. He's like, you, you just don't understand it. I did. I see love a tweet. going that route. Yeah. I love going that route. I did see a tweet and I think this is what, because at first I was like, yeah, yeah. I think this is what changed my mind. Somebody tweeted like, if you don't understand this album, that means you can't move your body and that's just not sexy. And I was like, don't you dare say I can't move this body because really like, starts move playing it. the album is like, yeah. you have to like this. You yeah, to- I was. No, I was like, oh, you have to move your body. This album I started fucking shaking my hips, moving my shoulders left and right. I was like, oh, my God, I can't not be sexy. I can't not move my body to Drake's album. They're like that's it's a perfect way to like I love going that that way to be like, oh, uh, guess you're guess you're not sophisticated enough to really understand this album <laughs> but it's like anyone could say that and it could just be bad too yeah no <laughs> like, like when we absolutely when we put out a bad podcast episode it's like no no guys you just don't understand yeah, the yeah, guys, vision of this episode yeah, we're in the future and you're just not here yet so you're just, not here yet in terms of having a lazy episode you understand what that means <laughs> no you just don't get it so no people and this is the thing it, i think it's just because it dropped out of nowhere when that happens you get like the harshest critique first and now people are going to start listening to it more and they're going to say this is going to be a fun album and good timing right before summer people are going to start going on trips it's going to be used for all their like party instagram captions djs are going to start remixing these songs too and they're going to pop off even more so it's it's only a matter of time before everyone's like holy shit we love this album <laughs> sue me i kind of like it yeah. yeah i tweeted that i said i i kind of like it i have i've listened to massive a few times massive is my favorite i one. like massive I, because i put um the one with 21 savage and sticky in a different um yeah category because sticky is also kind of rap but also more dance but massive is my number one dance song of yeah. the album i agree was there um any thoughts on tristan thompson being the being in the first music video that came out. Weird timing because of the Kardashians episode finale yeah. that just came out. Bad timing. Um, I think they seem like very Thompson good friends. Is just they do. You know, not a fan. Not a fan of Tristan Thompson. He got a tag yesterday. I saw um, from Chris Jenner. He is the father. Yeah, I mean, he she 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 always makes sure to include every father in her Father's Day post, and she did do that. But it's um. It's interesting that I guess like he really must be one of those guys that like other guys like and get along with and they're friends, but like they're not saying, oh, I want to set you up with my sister, you know, like that's like they know that he's a disaster in relationships, but they like hanging out with the guy, it seems. It's like those TikToks where it's like, who would you not let your, your brother date? And they go around and ask all the servers. Yeah. It's like uh, automatic Tristan Thompson. Totally. Who would you not let your sister date? Tristan Thompson. And it was just funny having him be in like the best man role where like the clip from the video is him being like, all right, man, you ready? Like big, like, here we go. <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, you're not ready. You'll never be ready. Yeah. And of course you're going to support Drake marrying 23 women. Yep. Totally. That's your dream. He's that like, is. bro, let me get some, let me get yeah. in there. Let me be the groom. You be the best man. I'll be the groom. <laughs> I, I think the vision for this music video is just missing something. And it's me as the groom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. He would have totally gone for that. I'm sure. We always want to be taking care of our bodies, making sure everything's in check, gut health, head, bot, everything. We just want to make sure everything's running right. And you could do that with care of when you go online, you fill out the quiz. 
you know, fill out what you think is bothering you. Maybe nothing's bothering you and you just want to fill it out just to check in with yourself. Maybe there's something you haven't even thought about that you need to get in check. That's where Care Of comes into play. It's a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door. Every single month, you take a short in-depth quiz, like I mentioned, and it helps you figure out what you need in your life. It's personalized guidance, quality products, and tools to help you not only build healthy habits, but also measure your progress so you can feel confident that your routine is actually doing something in your life. Each shipment comes with a customized booklet showing you exactly what you got and also cute little packets with your name and the vitamins uh, split up for you every single day. So you don't have all the bottles in your house getting all confused with all the vitamins. It's perfectly curated for you. For 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code CITO50. Once again, for 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com, enter code CITO50. Shocking news. Another (laughs) couple in Bachelor Nation did not make it. Michelle and Nate have announced that they broke up. Whoa. Yeah, I I think this one we kind of all saw coming. Um, They put out two statements. Michelle said to those who have supported Nate and I, including Bachelor Nation, I know I speak for the both of us when saying having a relationship in the public eye has not been easy. I'm struggling to say that Nate and I will be going our separate ways, but I stand with him and knowing the heaviness that is present in both of our hearts as this relationship has been very real for us. To you, Nate, you quickly became my best friend and the love I have for you is incredibly strong. I will never stop wanting to see you succeed. I will always acknowledge and appreciate the adventures, support, and growth both Nate and this experience have brought me. At the same time, I'm deeply hurting and will need some uh, and will need time and space to work through this heartbreak. Nate wrote, when we both started this journey, we were looking for our soulmates, our forever, our best friends. However, as you grow and learn, we also realize that sometimes somebody that you hold dear to your heart isn't somebody that you're meant to spend the rest of your life with. Michelle and I are going to move forward separately. Hearts are heavy. Emotions are high. And we are dealing with this the best way we can. Michelle and I are naturally private people. And when it comes to this breakup, we will continue being so. However, what I do want to share with you all is that it was real. We generally fell in love and we generally became each other's best friends. Michelle and I will always cheer each other on, but moving forward, we will be cheering from a distance. To the public who has supported these two complete strangers on your television screen, we appreciate you so much. Our relationship may have developed in the public eye. And we know this news will bring a lot of mixed reactions, but please remember that this is real. The emotions are real. The heartbreak is real and that we are real. We're human beings going through a breakup and we all know breakups are difficult. So we're, so we're asked, Jesus Christ, these are long. So we're asking that you allow us our privacy so that we can mend our hearts in the privacy of our own lives. Thank you. Two very long messages with basically the same um, written in the same tune. Everything was real. They did fall in love. They were best friends. They'll continue to support each other, but not as a, not as a couple. Yeah. Can't say this is a shocking one. To me, it kind of sounds like Nate broke up with Michelle. Yeah. From, from Michelle's posts. It, it felt like Nate broke up with Michelle. I don't know who knows, but I'm not surprised by this at all. I am done buying into these fucking couples. As soon as the show ends, like catch me, six months or so down the line when they're as happy as Rachel and Matt James, and then I'll be supporting them. But I, I, the bachelor can't even, can't even properly pay these people off. They got, remember that fat check. Oh my God. I forgot. They got a down payment on a house. They got a fucking down payment on a house. Never. What are they going to do? Never made it to that house. I think they get to keep the money. Like split the money. I guess. As these. Have these on the have these on the down payment? Wasn't it like two hundred thousand dollars? I think it was like a hundred thousand or two hundred. I feel like there's no way they get to keep that money. Like you only get to keep it if you two stay together. Like, yeah, like like then everyone would just be like, all right, let's break up. Like let's just be together, get this money, and then you know what's crazy? It. They didn't fucking give Clayton and uh, Susie a down payment on a house. Yeah, I feel like if you do that for one couple, you got to do it for every couple. It was two hundred thousand dollars. $200,000 they can get like a $2 million house with that. I know. The move never happened. The duo is broken up. Oh, I, no. Not, this, I, this article says that they think that they'll have to return it. Hopefully, Michelle oh. and Nate didn't use any of the money for other purposes, any, per, any other purposes, as it's almost guaranteed that they will have to return the $200,000 check to ABC. But at, at what point would they not have? Like if they lived together for like a year and then they like, broke up and then sold the house. Well, they like, do have that rule with engagement rings. Like they have to return the engagement rings if they break up before two years, I think. I think it's 
the rules that go into this show, I'm shocked that people are still like, yep, that's an investment. All of it's like, real. Even if you break up, I would say, like, let's just not publicly break up. We can, like, date other people. But, like, in two years, then we say we broke yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't it's, we just get a house to together? And, and just, like, throw parties. <laughs> or or just, you know, that's what people that's what people do to invest. Let's just invest yeah. in a house together. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's really hard to keep that private. Um, because, and, and, and I just feel like, I don't know if, I really like Michelle and I don't know if I was just, I just feel like there were so many rumors around Nate towards the end of that season of like sightings on Dumois and things like that of like, Oh, he's out in Austin. He's talking to all these girls and he's partying and like all these things. And I, so I don't know, clearly I think like, do I think like Michelle put her heart into this? Yes, absolutely. I don't know if that was, 100% 100% reciprocated. I hope it was, but you know, that's, it didn't end up working out. So it's all, and it's been a year, right? When did the, when did their season end? Probably this around this time last year. I feel like less than a year. No, it was in the, it was in December. Oh, they were in the fall. I always forget their, their season ended in December Oh, because it went Katie. And then, yeah, yes, you're right. You're right. It's been like, like it's been like seven months. These crazy kids. Damn. All right. Well, I'm, we don't know for sure on that, uh, on the check, just to, because people are saying that, uh, you know, obviously there's been quotes like Chris Harrison has been had said before about like the engagement rings, you know, if it lasts a couple months, the ring goes back. But after a certain number of years, they get to keep the ring. <laughs> They should just so, have to give that to Clayton, like mail a check to Clayton. I just yeah, pass like, it along. Yeah. Well, Clayton and Susie already live together. Yeah, well, they, they, could, but they could have a huge house. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's like maybe they just mis- misplaced misplaced uh, where to allocate that money to. So, yeah, hate to, hate to see that one happen. I'm very sad for Michelle. I feel like she's going through some changes. She's like taking a break from teaching. It's all these, all these things happening. So, um, I just I hope the best for her and I'm 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 iffy on Nate. I really am. The Actors on Actors series has been extremely popular. I think we've seen so many people talking about these videos. There's been uh Zendaya, Andrew Garfield, like a ton of them have really blown up. The one of the more recent ones is Jennifer Aniston and Sebastian Stan. And there was a lot of lot of conversation about what was said during this. It's it's a great back and forth. Two of them being uh, Jennifer's discussion about like what fame is now compared to what it used to be and uh, how that affects the art of acting. And uh, also that the Jennifer Aniston salad that we all thought she had every day on the friend set, she never actually ate. Yeah, that might be the shocking, <laughs> the most shocking thing of all is that that salad that I see every day on TikTok, create Jennifer Aniston salad she ate every day. And I'm like thinking about recreating it because I want to look like Jennifer Aniston. And then I realized why waste my time? Because Jennifer Aniston did not eat that. I don't know where people get these things. They're, right. They, it's they, crazy to think of where that started. It's like, like how did just, that become a thing? They just make shit up. It's wild. Yeah. But uh, Jennifer Aniston, Sebastian Stan, you know, they asked each other questions. Jennifer Aniston asked um, Sebastian a lot of questions about Pam and Tommy. Did he follow Pam and Tommy? He's from Romania. So he was like, I, you know, was not from here. And yeah, I didn't really follow them that much in the 90s. And obviously, if you watched Pam and Tommy, there was a, a very strange but funny scene where Sebastian Sand talks to his penis that's yeah. like animated. So Jennifer Aniston obviously asked him about that, which I love. I love that she asked him about that. And then Jennifer Aniston talked about how she thinks that the industry nowadays kind of dilutes the actor's job. And she's really happy that they got to get into the industry before everything started happening with TikTok and YouTube. And she just said that you can become famous from literally anything uh, nowadays. And I think yeah. a lot of people like twisted her words. And I saw I saw like YouTubers and TikTokers getting upset. I was like, OK, we're not going to sit here and get upset about Jennifer Aniston. You're still doing fine. You're still making a name for yourself. Don't get upset at Jennifer Aniston, who just like grew up and became famous in a different time. She was an actor. She was on Friends. She talked a lot about how, you know, filming Friends is a lot different than filming, say, the morning show now because Friends was filmed in front of a live studio audience. And I feel like 
we've heard them talk about this before where they said that any actors that joined their show, uh, you know, for guest appearances were always so, so scared because it's a live audience. Yeah. And so they like have to laugh and they have to get people to laugh, even though there's definitely a laugh track and they're definitely told when to laugh. Definitely. This is the part that people like hold up the, the laugh, the yeah. giant laugh sign. Please and laugh. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. I, I think a lot of her comments are maybe being blown out of proportion when it comes to like fame now. And I do think like headlines look a lot more serious than actually like watching the clip. Like, you know, it's like, oh, Jennifer Aniston says that, you know, people are famous for nothing, i.e. Paris Hilton, Monica Lewinsky, like, et cetera. I, she didn't, I didn't even hear her say Monica. I don't know if, like, there she, was a, but I, I don't think she brought it up right after Paris Hilton. Like, they weren't said in tandem. It was the way that the, the thing is, there was a written article and then um, video. So I think a lot of people read the article and then a right. lot of people watched the video. But I think that, I don't, like, when you're talking casually like that, I don't think you realize exactly what you're saying yeah. every second. And I don't think she probably meant it in a, a mean way. She, she just also meant acknowledged like, how successful they are. Like yeah. Like, like, yeah. And they they're and then they've done a great job doing it. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just they did not become famous from being on a hit TV show. They right. became famous for doing a bunch of other things that doesn't include acting or whatever it is. And and look, Jennifer Aniston is from a different generation now. Yeah, like, she's older. Like it's just it's it's totally different for her. The 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 eighteen year olds that are crazy famous on TikTok or YouTube, whatever it is, it's like a totally foreign concept to her. So I don't think it's crazy for her to feel like this is so different, and I don't know how it works. And um, you know. I don't, I don't know necessarily how I feel about the comment of it, like diluting acting only because I feel like for a very long time, there have been a lot of famous people that are not actors. And that's just that that's a whole nother category of famous people. Now, maybe she feels that way for the people who just like become famous. And then they're like, Hey, I want to be an actor and they get jobs because they have, millions of followers already that's what i took it as because i think like paris hilton wasn't joining movies and tv shows in yeah, a very yeah. serious way yeah like say addison ray is now trying to do or other people which you can't blame right. them for right like if you get a huge platform and you grew up wanting to be an actress and you're like oh my god now's my time i can do a movie i can do a tv show of course they're gonna try and do it so yeah. you can't blame them for that but i think that's what she's referring to that it's like where they had to, you know, like grind, go to all these acting classes, go to a ton of auditions and like really put their life into trying to become an actor. Yeah. Whereas like now, if you just get a millions of followers, boom, overnight, you could just kind of walk your way right into it. Right, right. I think I think it makes sense. So, yeah, of course, like people are going to raise their eyebrows at that. But it's really is it that crazy of her to think that way? I really don't think so. I don't think so either. We have another great game of Beat Re and Fran. Bear, bear with us, guys, on some of uh, just a producer's note. I'm going to throw in here for trivia and for the interview. Uh, Barcel had us trying this new video recording service. I don't know how to describe it. That's not Zoom. And we tried it for a couple new things. And it's just we're back doing Zoom. That's how that's all. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. So if you're if there are some te technical difficulties, we apologize. Uh, the service just was not working the way we hoped it would. So uh, but now let's get into a great game of, uh, of Beat Re and Friend. Before we do that, there is a new dating app out there that I think you guys should all hear about. Uh, it's called Summer, which was formerly known as Spark. If you heard us talking about Spark on this podcast, it is now Summer. It is different from other dating apps because instead of swiping one by one, you see a bunch of profiles at the same time and pick who stands out like in real life. Uh, it recreates the feeling of walking into a party and seeing who catches your eye. So it's like, you know, you see a bunch of different people all at one time instead of just going one by one. So you kind of say, 
who, who really like, who draws your attention the most? Summer shows the people closest to you. You can open the app at a bar and the people you see on the grid are probably at the bar too. And you'll know who's single, which would be a great little trick. You can spend less time on apps and more time on dates. Lights expire after 24 hours, so you won't wait around for weeks wondering if someone is going to message you. If you're tired of swiping and want to meet cool people in your area, go to the App Store and download Summer or click the link in the description. So one more time, if you want to switch it up, try a new dating app, you can go to the App Store, download Summer, or click the link in the description. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another game of Beat Rhea and Fran. This is game 39. We are joined by the lovely Noelle and Freddie who is ready to go and play the game. <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You guys are a sibling duo. We've been having a lot of, you know, men, women duos recently. They have been couples, so I do want to clarify that you guys are not a couple. Yeah. You are siblings. <laughs> um <laughs> And that's great. Very excited. We don't get too many sibling contestants, so that's a lot of fun. Love that. We're going to get started uh, going through the rules here. We're going to do 15 questions. Noah is going to read them for us. And if you get the question wrong, the other team can steal. The person or the team with the most points at the end uh, is the winner of Beat Ray and Fran. And to determine who goes first, Noah's going to give us a movie. We have to guess the Rotten Tomatoes score of that movie. We'll alternate guesses. Whoever is the closest will get to go first. So, Noah, what is today's movie? Today's movie is Good Luck, Chuck. Has everyone seen that? Yes. Okay. A very sure. long time ago. Yes. A long time ago as well. But it has been. All right. So, Noel and Freddie, one of you guys has a, a guess first. All right, I'll go first. Um, I'm gonna say 18%. I'll go 42. I'm gonna go 6%. Six? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably low. I'm gonna go 24. It's five. Wow, wow. <laughs> nice That's one, Rhea. That one can't be higher than like no. cheaper by the dozen couples retreat. No, uh, Camp Rock was like forty something percent. So, yeah, you know, brutal. Like, Damn. All right, five percent. Woo. That's a tough one. So we still, I think, uh, people enjoy that movie. I think so too. Oh yeah. Okay. Question number one to Rian Fran. Uh, what is the next line in this Harry Styles song? I'll give you a line. You tell me the next line. I just hope you see me in a little better light. Fuck. If only you could sing it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I am notoriously terrible at lyrics. 15 seconds. I fuck up lyrics all the time. This is killing me because... I don't Ten. even know what's what song. If I, had, if I had the beat, I would know it. But for some reason, five seconds. It's I not coming. It it's, it it's not coming to me either. No, it's not All coming right. to me. Time is up to Freddie and Noel. Uh, not huge yeah, not in the music. But can you read the line again, Noah? We'll try to yes. rhyme it. I just hope you see me in a little better light. Well, it's like a Harry Styles watermelon. <laughs> I don't think it's from that, Freddie. Um, what if we said, like, you know I'm never gonna give up this fight. Just... <laughs> it's not bad. It's That's a great line. On your feet. Like you yeah. <laughs> Five <laughs> seconds. Yeah, go with that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, no, I wish I could give you, like, wow. Noelle, points for creativity. Yeah, yeah. songwriter over here. <laughs> po poet, uh, and she didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, uh, the right answer is, do you think it's easy being of the jealous kind to be wow. so lonely? Yeah, yeah. Oh, to be so lonely. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, even if you sang that, I don't think I would have got it. I feel like if I sang Shit. it in the way that he says it, you would probably it would remind you what yes. song it is. But yeah. yeah. All right. Still zero zero. This is to Noel and Freddie. Shout out Taylor from Connecticut. Who is the only Disney princess with a tattoo? 
Um, I think. Moana? It can't be Mulan, that's too old. It's it's someone who's like Probably a fighter. Newer one too, right? Moana. I want to say Moana. I, like, I guess. You don't think it's Pocahontas, do you? No. Ten seconds. Moana? I like that. Alright, Moana. Confirmed. Incorrect. <sighs> Three in France. I, I feel like I like Pocahontas. Is it M- Mulan? Does Mulan have a tattoo? Why am I picturing Princess Jasmine with like a tramp stamp? Doesn't Pocahontas have that thing around her arm? It could be Pocahontas. It. I. I just pictured Prin- Princess Jasmine with tramp stamp, so you can't go with what I'm saying. Because my answer would have been Princess Jasmine. I think it's Mulan or Pocahontas. All right, I think Pocahontas. Let's go Pocahontas. Correct. Yes. Pocahontas. All right, one nothing. Ryan Fran. This is question number three to uh, Ryan Fran. Shout out Jessica from Charleston. In season two, in the season two finale of Gossip Girl, when Chuck finally tells Blair he loves her too, he also brings her two gifts from Europe. Name one of the gifts. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Two gifts from Europe? I have no idea. I, I started clue. rewatching Gossip Girl recently, but then I, I never finished the second season. I kind of gave up. Ten seconds. The, uh... An emerald stone. A, a crown? <laughs> All right, time is up. Tiara? <laughs> Final answer, Tiara. Incorrect. Uh, it's Freddie and Noel. <laughs> I've seen this, but I kind of want to say uh, two things come to my mind, which is like a pearl necklace and sh- or like shoes would be like a good generic answer, like gave her a gift from Europe. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, what do you think? More specific or more general? Pearl necklace sounds more right, but I also... Could be a different Five show. seconds. Time is up. We'll go pearl necklace. Incorrect. Uh, the correct answer would have been either macaroons from Paris or stockings from Germany. Oh. Ah. Macaroons. Easy answer. Yes. <laughs> we just want to use our freaking brains. That All right, is well, not coming to me. Still one nothing. Rian Fran. This is to Freddie and Noel. Shout out Sarah from Cleveland. What was the name of the Taylor Swift song made for the Hunger Games series? Is this... Um... Huh? Isn't it like Mockingbird? No. I don't think so. It'd be Mockingjay, I think, but... Uh... uh I can, like, hear it in my head. See, like... Didn't it have... It's like... Didn't it have, like, a B.O.B. feature? Or is that something else? What's the song she sings with B.O.B.? Five seconds. Huh? Both of us? Alright, time is up. Alright, both of us. Incorrect. (sighs) Hurry and Fran. I, uh, uh, don't know this. (laughs) This is, honestly, I hate when we don't know the answers to things, and this has been every question. I haven't known a single question. Uh, uh... Ten seconds. Fire and ice. I have no idea. <laughs> Bad blood. <laughs> I, I can't even think of like. I can't even hear the song. All right, time is up. Uh, safe and sound. Oh, uh, shoot! You, you had something going with the fire and ice. Shoot! I did. I did know that. I did know that. All right. Still one nothing. Ryan Fran, and this question is to them. Shoot. I feel stupid uh, today. Shout out Savannah from Se- Sevierville, Tennessee. Not sure. That's how you say it, but. Okay. What Netflix show did Madeline Klein appear on before Outer Banks? Stranger Things. What Rhea said. All right, correct. <laughs> Two nothing. Finally got one. I should have asked you what season. What do you know? Mm, three? Mm. Two? Uh, season, season two, episode one. 
Yeah. Shit. Uh. Alright. Two nothing Rhea and Fran. Question number six to Noel and Freddie. Shout out Sarah and Melanie from Orlando. Which song is not which song of these is not on the Jonas Brothers self titled album Jonas Brothers? A SOS B got me going crazy. C Australia D when you look me in the eyes. I want to say Australia. Is that the uh, Freddy? them on the cover? Like, yeah, like they're the the Jonas Brothers titled yeah. album. Yeah. Uh, not the first one. SOS, their first. Uh, I don't know. I something tells me Australia, but I don't know. I'm not confident. Sounds okay. accurate, right? Yeah, we'll say Australia. Uh, incorrect. To Rhea and Fran. I feel like it's got... What? It was SOS. Got SOS, me going crazy. Got me going crazy. Australia, when you look me in the eyes. When you look me in the eyes. Ten seconds. Yeah. It's when he looked me in the eyes on. Fuck. I'd say what? Let's go. The time is up. Let's go when he looked me in the eyes. Incorrect. No, it's fucking got me going crazy. Yeah. I shit. Got me going crazy was on a little bit longer album. God damn it. All right. Stink. <laughs> I I knew that in my head when he, he was I was like it's either Australia or Gummy Go. Why did I listen? Like what? What I don't know. Rhea said when he looked me in the eyes and I was like I, I wait maybe that is it. Oh, I don't know. It. All right, still two nothing. Rhea and Fran, and this question is to them. Shout out Ali from Ontario, Canada. Name the four songs that Drake and Rihanna have together. That's our question. Yeah. Um, work. Take care, lemon, and uh, freak. Oh shit. Um, <laughs> Five. Time is up. Damn. Freddie and Noel. I think it's one, isn't it one dance? No, that's a... No? That's somebody else. I mean, yeah, that was my guess, so... What? Is he injured, boy? I don't think so, to be honest. The only thing that came to me was one dance, so if you got something else... Girl, I think one dance is, uh... Five seconds. Alright, so... You want to say Rude Boy? Take care, Lemon. And uh, work. It. And work. Incorrect. So the actual four are Take Care, What's My Name, I- Too Good, Work. Lemon, I don't think was put, counted because that was like a remix, but like th- those were all, those were the four songs. Take Care, mm. What's My Name, Too Good, Work. What's My Name, yeah. I heard you go to with them soft lips. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Still 2 nothing. Low scoring game here. Shit. Uh, this question is to Noelle and Freddy. Uh, shout out Jessica from Charleston again. What three famous actors star together in the 2014 movie That Awkward Moment? Oh, it's Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Zac Efron. Sounds, sounds good. Better than what I could come up with. I think it's that. Okay, final answer? Yeah. Correct. There we go. That's on the board. <laughs> Question number nine. It's t- it's uh, Rhea and Fran up 2-1, and this is to Rhea and Fran. Shout out Haley from Staten Island. What is the name of the father's boat in Step Brothers? It says our question. Yeah. Um... 
The Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria? No, those are the names of the other boats that they're singing. I don't know. I don't know this. I, I My Ten stepbrother's seconds. knowledge is not good. I know the name of their company, so... Three seconds. Ah. Time is up. All right, so Noel and Freddie. You got anything? The only thing I can think of is the name of the, the company. The Prestige Robot. Prestige Robot. Actually, guess. Any guess? Then that's. You got anything? No, I just got. All right, ten seconds. Nothing. Prestige Robot. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, the correct answer is Gilded Lady. I was never going to get that. No. Was gonna get that. Nope. All right. Still 2-1. Very <laughs> low-scoring game. Very. It's it's really sad, honestly. Um, Noah did say he, he before you got in here, Rhea, he was like, I don't know how I feel about these questions today. So he, he already did put that out there in the okay. universe. All right. Yeah. All right. Question number 10. Uh, this is to Freddie and Noel. I'm gonna play a movie clip, and you tell me what movie it's from. Oh, okay. Well, uh, so, so should I ask her out? No, you don't want to freak her out. You gotta have a casual conversation first. Hello. Uh, it's Amanda Bynes. Yeah. Was that Amanda Bynes? That, was I that think Channing so. Tatum? Was it a man? It could be. Kinda like. <laughs> The, the lines don't mean much to me, from what I heard. I mean, it, it's definitely Amanda Bynes. I think he's the man. She's the I man. Like is that. a good guess. Yeah, she's the man. Yeah. Correct. All right. You know when you I hear know. somebody say like, "This is a guess," and you know the answer, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah. "Say it." Like I, yeah. like I, it's not even like I'm rooting against you guys. I'm like rooting for you guys. Like, just say it. That is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tied up at two now. Question number 11 to Rian Fran. Shout out Beta from Long Island. In the commercial for the Tipton on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, what color was Carrie's dress? Red. Red. Right? Red. Red. Let's not overthink this one. Red. Red. Final answer. Final yeah. answer. Correct. Okay. I was, yeah, I was like, wait a second. Don't tell me it was yellow. <laughs> How many times could the two of us go back we, and forth? Red, red. We made a spreadsheet red. with her on it. Yes, it was red. commercial. Yes. <laughs> All right, three, two, Rhea and Fran. This is question number 12 to Freddie and Noel. Shout out Christy from Milwaukee. What snack do Hallie and Annie both figure out they like in the parent trap? Oreos dipped in peanut butter. <laughs> that's that's final answer. Oreos dipped in peanut butter. Um, correct. I gotta stop <laughs> nodding my head. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> anyway, Rhea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tied up at three. Question number 13 to Rhea and Fran. Shout out to Sarah and Melanie from Orlando again. Which Maroon 5 song out of these was not a Billboard Hot 100 number one hit? A, Payphone. B, Makes Me Wonder. C, Moves Like Jagger. D, One More Night. Um, makes me wonder. Because that's an awesome song, but I don't think it was a number one. Bill, Payphone, Billboard, what was it? Billboard Hot number 100. One? Yeah. Number one hit on Billboard Hot 100. Because Payphone definitely Payphone was. definitely. Moves like moves Jagger, Jagger, definitely. 100%. One More Night, definitely. So I think makes me wonder. Yeah, okay, I'm good with that. Final answer? Yeah. Yep. yep. In incorrect. You gotta go. To so Freddie and okay. Noel. You're on mute. Yeah. One yeah, more night, did you say? I was gonna say one more night too. I sneaky think it could be like a trick question, but it can't be the other. All right, one more night. Yeah. Lock it in. Lock it in. Incorrect as well. The it is a fucking is... trick question. Wow. The correct answer is payphone. It peaked at number two because somebody that uh, I used to know was number one. Wow. Oh, they got... come on. I'm out of pay 
phone drive. Makes me wonder is a great song. Makes me wonder is one of my favorite yeah, ones. That is good songs. Songs. Yeah. Um, I just you oh, payphone was yeah. on the radio all the time, every second. Yeah, but think about how much but somebody, somebody that used that to know, used to know yeah, somebody that used to know always yeah. on, yeah. on the radio. Yep. Yep. All right, still tied up at three. Two questions left. Shout out Anna from Puerto Rico. And Harry Potter, and this is to um, so this Freddie is to and Noel. Freddie, Freddie and Noel. And Noel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is to Freddie and Noel. In Harry Potter, where is the secret meeting place of Dumbledore's army? I just watched Harry Potter because I followed along with the podcast. But Love much that. like Rhea, I'm not super. <laughs> it was hard to get through, I'm not gonna lie. Um, secret meeting place. I don't know. The, the dining area. The dining hall. College? <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Final answer? Yeah, I guess the Hogwarts dining area. Incorrect. <sighs> to read, friend. Room of requirements. Correct. Final answer. <laughs> Listen, any guess could have been that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Four, three... Rhea and Fran. All right, Rhea, we gotta get this right. We they have get this to. one, they win, or Freddie and Noel could try to tie it up. Shout out Megan from it's Edgerton, been such a, Wisconsin. It's been such a bad game, it'd be funny if it went into overtime. <laughs> <laughs> On Grey's Anatomy, Meredith, Alex, and Christina are the main interns who went on to have a specialty at Grey Sloan. What are, the, <clears throat> what are their surgical specialties? The three of them. <laughs> Say say which the, the Meredith, Meredith, Alex, Christina. Meredith is general surgery. Alex is peds, and Christina is cardio. Final answer. Correct. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank <clears throat> God, Fran. Yeah. Christina is cardio... Th- how do you say Cardio. It? Cardiothoracic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. shortened them. Those are, you know, that's no, the you slang. That's, yeah, the, yeah. that's the... That's yeah, the, that's, that's the saying. That's, saying. that's yeah. how they say it on the show, now what you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so 5-3 is the final. Ooh, a close one. Another win. I, can't believe, I can't believe we won that one. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> there was a lot of right answers yeah. at the end. It was a slow yeah. start. Yeah. Slow yes. start. Yeah. Slow start, but we made it through. No, I mean, you, you guys, guys three were questions, great. right? Yeah, People have I mean, done way worse. <laughs> don't, don't need to apologize to us. <laughs> no, no, people have done way worse. They have, I mean, people have yeah, didn't thrown up a zero, I feel like, right? Yes. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah. no, as long as you've got some right, Thank which you. I did. Thank you guys for playing. Yeah, yeah and if- thanks for having us. We have a great interview with Hero Finds Tiffin coming up. We loved him. He was absolutely adorable. We hope we can uh, have him back on soon. But before we get into that, ladies, I know we talk about rowback all the time. A lot of times it's about getting gifts for Father's Day or, you know, for your brother, husband, boyfriend, whoever, because they do have amazing menswear, but they also have these great ladies hoodies that are so soft. Uh, They're stretchy. They're comfortable. They have, it's truly one of the best materials out there. They have great, um, like it's great, solid colors. And I love them because they're great, like transitional sweatshirts. Um, I am, when you're in, when you're in somewhere, a climate that, you know, it's nice and it's warm during the day, but it's cold during the night and you need that like transitional sweatshirt. This is the perfect one because it's not too heavy where you feel like, oh my God, this is way too much for the summer. Um, but it does keep you nice and warm at night. They also have their performance polos, which are great gifts. They're also an amazing material. They have fun prints. They're one of the best fitting polos out there. I would say, uh, I wash them all the time for Joe because he's got a bunch of them and you know, the collars always stay intact. They're really, really great. He loves them. And I think you guys will love them too. They're made with moisture wicking performance fabric, and they're all tagless. So they never itch. You can use the code chicks on rowback.com for 20% off your first order of performance hoodies, polos, quarter zips, and tees. That's spelled R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. 20% off with the code chicks. 
All right, everyone, we are here with a very special guest. We have Hero Finds Tiffin. You probably know him from the after movies. He has a new movie, First Love, coming out June 17th that we are very excited about and very excited that you are here talking with us, Hero. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. And yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to see this one too. So I can't wait. How are you doing? Where are you at right now? I'm in London, lovely London, and the sun is out. We get about 24 days of sun a year, I'd say. So when the sun comes out, everyone's out with their barbecues and the beers and enjoying themselves. And I said, I'm going inside to do some Zooms and chat with Fran and Rina. <laughs> oh, don't worry about like, it. The sun, is out. The, the, the sun is out. The sun is out, but I'm still hiding. <laughs> There's that this much sun left and I'm racing it. I reckon I'll be able to get to it just before, just after we finish. So we're all good, but I'm happy to good. be here. We'll make it quick so you, can, <laughs> so you can feel the sun. So, yeah, is no, it, you're fine, you're fine. so that's true that it really is like cloudy, rainy. Yeah, it's like, we do have, when it's nice, it can be really, really nice. I think it's supposed to be 33 degrees on Friday. I don't know what that is in you guys, Fahrenheit, we do Celsius, but. It does get Sounds nice, warm. but it's just... I, I heard 33 degrees warm. and I thought that's freezing, but yeah. Yeah, I know, but when you guys say like it's 100, I'm like, bloody hell, like how can you leave the house? But um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we do get nice days, but it's just so consistently grey. I feel like from February, March through to around about now, it is just grey and rainy and just, yeah. Is, is that great, something but, that... Um, I just try and try and go to LA in those months and film First Love and then come back for the 24 days of sun in London. That's the, that's the ideal setup anyway. Yeah, I was going to ask, you must spend a lot of time in LA. A fair bit. Um, I don't have like a base out there at all. I just love to go when there's a job opportunity out there. And I know a fair few people out there. So yeah, anytime there's an excuse to get out to LA, LA I'll be there. But because I'm so lucky to travel so much for my work, I feel like my holidays are spent at home. Like when I have time off, I'm just at home, just catching up with friends and stuff. But um, no, I love LA. I really do. Did you, so you, did you film First Love in LA? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? I stay, have you seen this, the Borat, not the second one, the, the most recent Borat? Yes. Um, and I've forgotten her name because she's the best actress in the, not because, but I've forgotten her name. She's the best actress in the world. The woman, the girl who plays like Borat's daughter, or, or I think it's his daughter. Yes. And she's she has like, a tough name. She's not, she's not acting. She is being, she's undercover. <laughs> she's like a spy. Like I can't believe she's done that so flawlessly, but apparently she stayed at the same accommodation, the same Airbnb I was in when we were shooting First Love, which was like West Hollywood, not near enough. And all the locations were like 20 minutes away. So it was really cool to be able to just kind of feel like you're living in LA, filming something in LA, the characters in LA, everything didn't feel like we're on a movie set. It just felt like we're here and we're being and we're doing. So that yeah, was really that's, cool. Yeah, That's I was great. Re religiously getting matcha from, what's it called? Matcha matcha, I think it's called. Yeah. Is that matcha, what it's called? Like the green. Yeah. The one yeah, in, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. the one in, what's the one in New York called, Rhea? Cafe Matcha? I, I forget what it is. Something, but they have all the yeah. sayings because it's and They're matcha, all the same. So they like, they make up all yeah. their sayings on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. That's the one. And uh, I can't lie, man. I hate myself. I really hate myself. But now I drink oat milk and I love matcha. And it's really sad. I get rinsed for it. But it I was going to say, that sounds like a very LA thing to do. And it is. It is. It's embar we've it's only embarrassing. been to LA a couple of times and we just try to stay away from falling into that. We're like, we can't yeah, start eating know, healthy. Why. We got to stick to ourselves. <laughs> I know it got me. Oh, I'm never going to do the like sweet green and religiously every day. I'm going in and out and Chick-fil-A. That, that will never change. Thank that God. Change. That's all. We can, that's all we can ask for. <laughs> I, it's just I, could, ima I could imagine. Morning. Yeah. I could no, imagine you the, your friend. I could imagine your friends at home in, uh, in England would love to give you shit for that. Yes, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Until I put them on and then they try it and they're like, Oh damn, well, you're onto something now. <laughs> Like these LA people, they may know what they're talking about. Uh, but your yeah, movie, I mean, first not so love, much of the gluten free stuff, but yeah. <laughs> oh no, forget that. But yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. Um, your movie, first love, like we said, comes out June seventeenth. It's in theaters. It's on demand, and you know we all know you from the after films as mm -hmm. well, which you seem to live in the romance genre. Would you say? 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me let me. <laughs> down. So, so, I've never like set out to do roles like that specifically. And when I first did after, I was kind of apprehensive because it wasn't really like the the, the thing I felt drawn to. It's like if I've auditioned and they believe in me, then I guess I can do it. Let's give it a go. And I've done it and I've loved what it's done for me. I've loved the process. I'm eternally grateful for the fan base and the opportunities it's given me and specifically the ability to now go and do things that I would have previously been apprehensive or scared or, or whatever to do. Now I'm just like, I've expanded my comfort zone and I'm fine to do it. And, and, and I feel like that's such a big thing and it's done that for me. And then I've said, okay, cool. We're still in the world of doing after. We've done like four movies. I don't want to do any more romances, guys. Let's look for other genres. And then they sent a romance for us. Like, what's this? Like, I, swear, I thought we just, they're like, just read it, just read it, just read it. So I read it and I was like, oh, damn it, man. This is kind of good. Like, this is really good. And the actors attached, they're amazing with Diane Kruger, Jeffrey Donovan, Sydney Park. And I was like, oh, gosh, all right, I might have to do this. But I still had it in my head. Like, if, if AJ, the director, like, for whatever reason, it feels like he's not a hundred percent invested in me. Then, then I probably won't do it. And instantly on the on the Zoom call, I remember him just being so supportive and saying how I was his, you know, first choice. And and it was him specifically who wanted me. And his belief in me is what made me go, okay, cool, let's do it. And I think it was also a bit of that, a bit of how great the actors I'd be working with are and were, but also after is a certain type of romance and first love is i feel like the complete opposite side of the romance you know coin and jim is completely opposite from hardin in terms of like what the spectrum of what people are like so i felt like if i'm scared because i don't want to put myself in a box of doing the same roles all the time if anything i'm doing myself such a favor by doing another romance but a completely different romance of a completely different character so that was that was kind of what what made me do it, and I'm so glad I'm so glad I did because I'm so proud of the work and I had such great fun filming it. Having said that, I would like to not move away from romance, but move towards other genres because it does feel like it's a lot of what I do. But um, but no, we're getting there, and I'm still super proud of all the work I've done after First Love, all the romantic stuff. I still always really appreciate it, but yeah, I will get a gun in my hand and a car chase soon. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we've seen the trailer for First Love. It looks great. We love a, yeah. a romance movie. We eat all of that up, obviously. But I was going to ask, what is a dream role for you? And you just mentioned, you know, a little car chase, gun in your hand. What would be like the yeah. perfect character set up for you if you had to write a character for yourself? All right, cool. All right, cool. So he grows up in South London. Yeah, let's say tough upbringing, but he's morally justified. Yeah. <laughs> And then he's really good at football, but maybe the mafia come and break his legs because of something he's done. Or, you know, their their son is like on the same team and wants the number nine shirt or whatever. And then he's got a dabble in crime, even though he doesn't want to. So he's playing football, running around, getting chased by the police, car chases. You know, yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Can you guys make yeah, a script I'm, out of that? I feel I'm like I'm you some pieces. If, if I could yeah? just like maybe get a producer credit on it, then I'm in. <laughs> oh, you, you play it. Get me a writer. Let's get it. Let's get a script together. And yeah, but no. In all seriousness, I would. I would love to do something in in that kind of. In we that could kind do like realm. the Sopranos I guess that, in London. Mm, mm, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> English mafia. I'm finally. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. We can. We can. We've got the pieces here, guys. It's only a matter of time now. I'm gonna do it. It's What's that it, you know they've made. A Go on, they go made on. a lot of. Uh, they, I know it's great. We love a chatty guest is our favorite. Like that's, that's it saves us a lot of work. Um, the I was gonna say the Kingsman movies. They've made a lot of those, but I, it yeah. feels like that could be uh, that could be no, a spot. What? Maybe they make another one. <laughs> I did audition for the most recent Kingsman movie when I was shooting the first after at Jenny Gage, the director's living room at like 2 a.m. because we wrapped at like 11 p.m. And my agents were like, if you want to get a tape off, it has to be today. And I just did it with probably half my face on the floor because we were just knackered <laughs> and thinking about other roles. And I did it with Robbie, big up Robbie, um, who was Jenny Gage, the director's assistant at the time. And it was just such a, so yeah, funny little anecdote. I did audition for that. But uh, I'm not surprised I didn't get it because it probably wasn't <laughs> one of my favorite. What's yeah, a movie? 
What's a movie recently besides that one that you would have died to be in? Hmm. Um, I can't lie, man. I've struggled to watch Top Boy, the series in, in London, because I would have loved to have a role in that. But um, it's not a film, it's a series. And then I'm also going to say another series. I'm just completely changing your question or answering it differently. But That's I'm finally watching anything. The Wire. I used, to, I, used to, I used to watch episodes with uh, of The Wire with my brother when he was watching. And now I'm finally like watching on my own start to finish. And it's like crack. That show is insane. Like it is so good. And, and yeah, I would, I would, I would have killed for a role in that. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good answer. Team going here, but I yeah, to I can tell you, you want to get into some like, crime. <laughs> I should just go rob a bank right now. <laughs> I feel like it's yeah, my, my way of fighting back against the like fact that you guys are on to me for doing the romance. Stuff, you're right. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> in um in first love, you know you you sound different. How, how do you like to do the the American accent? How how do you try and and perfect that? Because we all like to think that we can do British accents, and none of us actually can. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was so scared before doing the American accent. I've done American accent in auditions loads and I always get like positive feedback on, you know, no one ever mentions anything wrong with it. And I've done uh, American accent, but it's more like a Southern accent in the silence thing. And taking this one for some reason, even though having done all of that for some reason, I was just in my head about it. Just thinking I just, I was really doubting my ability to, to, to do a good American accent. And we had one dialect coach called Joy, and I thought I'd be able to meet her in person, do loads of sessions. I think we only had probably like seven, six or seven sessions on Zoom. And she was so helpful. And I got to a point where I was like, okay, cool, I've got this. And the night before our first day, I've sent her some voice notes. Um, and I think she called me back or sent one back. I was like, hero, these are like the worst you've ever done. <laughs> but it's not because you're bad, it's because you're nervous. And it's the night before. And, you know, just go in there, trust yourself, be yourself, talk in an American accent from the very moment you get on set. And she said, I know you're not going to do this because English people always have too much pride. And they're like, oh, I don't want to feel like I don't want to seem like a wanker. She did a really good English accent and said that. <laughs> and it was like reading my mind. I was like, that's exactly what I thought. So I slowly kind of went in and out of it. And by the end of the film, I was like, listen, it's too late. I've said what I've said. And I've got positive <laughs> feedback and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. So somehow by God's grace and Joy's seven Zoom sessions, we made it work. But I'd be lying if I said I was confident. I was bricking it the night before. Yeah, you're like, whatever we put out there is done with. The movie's done. They can take whatever accent I yeah, with them. it's too late now. <laughs> now, there's been a lot of talk lately, and I know if I know I'm going with this because I can't stop talking about it. But there's been oh, a lot of talk Jesus. lately about Austin Butler's Elvis accent and how now he talks like the accent that he was doing Elvis in. Did you struggle with then going back to your normal accent? Is it? I need to research this. That sounds mad. So I haven't seen it yet. Oh, you have to research it. That is great. And, and, and yeah, has only good things to say about him. So, so, so pick him up, even though I haven't seen it. But yeah, what? Yeah, I'm going to research that. That sounds interesting. But the Elvis accent's pretty mad anyway, isn't it? I can imagine how that would kind of be a bit more like, you know, that would draw you into it. But no, 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 no. For me, <laughs> and I feel like this is why I'm going after moving forward, it's so important to, like, do the accent so much because, like, making different noises uses different muscles that aren't strong because you don't talk like that. So it does, after a while, it's tiring, like, to talk in a different, mentally as well. And and I feel like you get over that by speaking on set all the time. And I know Damson Idris did that because our – um, makeup artist said she worked on him with something and she kept on telling him like just speak for one second in your normal accent just break just let me just hear your normal accent and he never would and his accent's flawless so moving forward I might have to take a leave from his book and be a bit more disciplined about just staying <laughs> in the accent the whole time but no luckily I was taking every opportunity to start talking like myself again because it's tiring <laughs> I can't. yeah what was your uh, favorite part of playing your first love character I think it was a lot of a lot of the interest in why I like took the role and a lot of the reassurance in doing another romance, as I said earlier, was because he's so different from Hardin. So I feel like I've, I'm playing this guy who's so, you know, short fuse, rational. He's had like a tough upbringing. So naturally he's 
you know, just got his own demons and stuff. And Jim in First Love is a complete opposite. He's had a great upbringing. He's patient. He's got all the time in the world. He's a great listener. And I was really excited to to play because I'm often playing as hard. I'm like, can he just be a bit more composed? Can he just be a bit more, <laughs> you know, this and that? And I'm like, okay, Jim's going to be nice. Jim's going to be chill. Jim would do... And then we're like three days in and I'm like, I want to punch a wall or throw a, <laughs> throw a lamp somewhere or like hit my dad or such. You know what I mean? so <laughs> the, grass always, you know, the grass is always greener with, with characters. But um, I, I just think his maturity, I think he's so wise and gentle and patient. And I think they're really, really fun to play, to play into that. He also doesn't speak too much. So you've got to draw more on like acting with physicality, which is always, always interesting. And like you mentioned earlier, I'd imagine it's hard to say no to a role when the director themselves is saying how badly they want you to play the role and how much they see you in mm. that part. Yeah, definitely. Especially for me, especially for, I think, probably most younger actors who are still more, you know, more craving that validation or that support. Because I've said before, like, you can you can monitor how good a, a runner is by how many seconds it takes him to run a distance. And that's definite like you know who's faster than the other but with actors it's such a nuance like you can't it's you know like like all art you can't really compare it to an extent so when you have a director as as great as AJ saying that he really believes in you that's kind of like all I needed it was just like um yeah no I, I think for me personally it's really important that your director has has full belief in you because mm -hmm. otherwise like I also feel like there's a world in which after after I was ready to say to him like God forbid you want me for this role because producers have told you we'll be able to sell it if Hero's in it because he's got a following from after. That's a night you never want to be attached to something if that's the reason, I, personally, anyway. So when he said, before I even had to ask how you know much he believed in me, that was that was really, really important to me. So, Well, I was going to ask how often you are auditioning <clears throat> for different films and series because, like you said, you do have the following already and people know your work but I'm sure there are still roles you need to audition for versus people just sending you a script and saying, hey, do you want to be a part of this? Definitely. I remember auditioning and having the, you know, little conversations about like, oh, eventually you get to a point where you just get, you know, you get offers in. And then I remember after doing, after getting like the first offer for something that you're not too keen to be attached on, but the fact it's an offer, I'm like, wait, these guys are actually happy to, to just, promise me much to just promise me money and I'll promise I'll, I'll do a great job on their mm -hmm. film. Like, how do they know I can do it? How, why are they trusting <laughs> me this much? Like, and then you do a few more afters and then you're like, yes, I'm very appreciative that that offers come straight in. Um, I am the kind of actor who needs a bit more of a push to do my auditions and a bit more of a nudge from my agent to be like, here, hurry up. We sent you this like two weeks ago. We need you to get it back. So I have to say I am very appreciative of the luxury that is getting offers Having said that, I'm always, always happy to take because I'm aware, as I said earlier, like how scary it must be to hire someone and just expect they can do it given their previous work. Like I think it's so important to see someone in the character. So I'm never, never hopefully going to get too big to audition, but I do love, I do love the luxury that is getting yeah. a straight offer. In. Yeah. Has there been an offer that you declined that you have now seen just like take off or something that we would know of? Ooh. You're trying to draw me out. I don't know how to say this. I thought it was a good question. Really, I really, really want to tell you about something that's come out that I said no to, but I'm actually not going to. But I'll speak about it as generally as I can. But but um, it was really hard for me to say no. The money was great, but the offer wasn't where my heart was. And now I, I don't feel too bad about having not been a part of it. I'm actually really scared right now. I'm going to do like a Tom Holland and say it and accidentally that. Like, <laughs> Um, but no, no, there are definitely, definitely offers that have come in that I've said no to. And I'm, I'm lucky I haven't yet touched wood, had that one that you go, oh man, I should have said yes to that. And it will come. I'm so aware it will come. I'm so aware because it's getting to a point now where like, when you can pick and choose, it's so much more than just what's on the script and like bringing it to life is a whole different story. And then the scheduling and if you're doing something else, you might have been keen to do it if you were free all year, but if it's your only bit of free time, you might say no. And I'm very ready for that project to come that I decline and I kick myself for years after about, but luckily it hasn't come, hasn't come just yet. Yeah. We'll figure out the answer to that question after we yeah. stop recording. <laughs> we'll, I really we'll, hope we don't. I'm literally here like, have I given them to, did I say that? No, <laughs> not at all. Not, a, not, not even a little bit. Um, I, you know, I don't want to keep you 
too long here from your from your beautiful day, but I have to ask I because see the sunlight, yeah, it's as the, as you're watching the sunset, I'm like these girls won't <laughs> stop talking. Um, I this it is a little bit of a flip, but you know you played a young Tom Riddle in Harry Potter, and that is yeah. one of my all time favorites. Uh, I actually just made Rhea watch all the movies for the first time ever. We did a whole podcast series on it. She had never seen them. Um, and we watched them all and we recapped them all again for a new time. And I just, you know, what now, what's it like looking back and being like, wow, that was a, I got to do that. That's pretty cool. I, it, that is exactly what it feels like. Yeah. It feels like a lifetime. And I remember like the incentive was a day off school. I was never getting the role in my head. Like I was just going for a day off school. Like I wasn't going to do it if it was on a weekend. Like, it was, like, <laughs> yeah. And then I got like, I think we did like six or seven callbacks and love to my mom because she used to take me every time. And to be fair, I'm sure she enjoyed it. Um, but but yeah, she used to take me every time. And, you know, she would like direct me and and, and like, say, I think you should do it like this. I'm like, yeah, whatever, mom, I'll do it like that then. And then went in there and eventually got the role and it was so surreal. And, and um, yeah, I, as I said, I never thought I would, I would. And when I look back, I'm so grateful to be a part of that. And I think it just... I think it really set me up with a mentality of like, I don't know, if you just start in there, I just wasn't too nervous doing a lot of auditions. I didn't feel like the stakes were too high. And it just, I don't know, I think it set me up really well on my journey. But something that's funny since you said that you've just watched them so recently, Ria, I, my brothers never really loved them. I say my brothers, my brother, my brother has never really loved them, my older brother. And he rewatched them recently and he came into my room and he used to say, like, oh, I can talk to snakes too when he wanted to annoy me. And, like, <laughs> you know, when we're, when we're arguing, like, we knew, you always know what gets under your sibling's skin. And he used to know that would get to me. So, yeah, fair play to him. He'd use that all the time. And he came into my room the other day and he was like, bro, I just like rewatched Harry Potter's and your scene is so good like you're so good in it i see why they passed you and it's like he really was just being so nice man i'm just replaying in my head the amount of times he's like taking the piss out of me but it was a really nice moment where he was like finally like you know nice and appreciative he had that realization where he was like oh oh my god my brother is good he's a good actor it was actually like it was like oh, but you were in like harry potter like it's pretty big <laughs> it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know that like one of yeah. the biggest movie franchises of all time <laughs> No, no, he's a no. He's he's always obviously been so supportive. It was just funny that you know at the time and of him saying that. So yeah. But what did you think then, Ria? What was your impressions? Um, honestly, I struggled a little bit to get through them just because I would love to live in a world where all of this was real, like the magic, the spells, everything, and I just had to keep reminding myself. Or not, I didn't have to. I just was reminded constantly that it was fake. And I think if I watched it as a kid, I would have been like, wow, I could totally yeah. buy into this. But like watching as I'm older, Definitely. it was harder for me to buy into until I went to Harry Potter World in Universal. <laughs> and then obviously I was buying into everything and I was putting on like the cape okay. and I was getting the butter beer and I was doing all that and riding the rats. No, so then I like, really bought into it. <laughs> yeah, I hear you don't. Like jump off a roof with a broomstick between your legs or anything, but, but yeah, by all means, like indulge in the realism. But I agree with you completely in the way that it, it, it feels like I don't know. It feels like not if you weren't on that train, you missed it. But there's something about being there in that in that age, and when you're younger, you do kind of feel that sense of of why that makes more sense. But I secretly have a thing with all sci-fi and fantasy, where I'm like, it's like when magicians do tricks. I'm not here to enjoy what you I'm trying to figure out how you do it and I'm just trying to figure out the rules so when I watch films with sci-fi and fantasy I'm always like but what are the rules can the spirit just move through walls or can this with the tentacles and just you know what I mean there's the, the, the slime comes from but they're in the you other, like, in the world <laughs> with you would have really like, liked wait. Rhea's questions <laughs> yeah I, I yeah, totally you would have you really liked Rhea's critique <laughs> every, I wrote down notes for every film and every question I had was like but wait I, I think our producer even asked like was there a funeral for Dumbledore like something <laughs> so simple that you wouldn't even <laughs> think of watching but then because you're watching it now these questions mm -hmm. just come up and yeah. I was like because I loved it so much 
I was the opposite. So they would ask me these questions and I'm like, I don't fucking know guys. Like I, I didn't write the books. Like, <laughs> she I don't cool. know. She would go, who cares about that? And I'm like, I'm like well, I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Silly. Yeah. Oh, pinch silly stuff. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, uh, you know, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for hopping on and talking to us. Everyone can watch First Love June 17th. It's going to be in the select theaters. You can get it on demand, which I feel like is always the easiest. Um, then the last after movie is out in September, I believe, which I know fans are very excited about. Um, mm -hmm. And then what else do you have coming up? I saw you just signed on to do a very cool movie. Um about Greenpeace, I want to say. Yeah, the climb, the climb. So in 2013, a bunch of Greenpeace activists climbed the Shard in protest of shell drilling in the Arctic, and it's, it's a film. It's a film about that. that I'm really, really excited to be attached to. Uh, there's there you go. Not romance. <laughs> Not romance. I am. I, mm, oh, mm, nosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I probably could. I just get too scared, so I just better safe than sorry. But uh, another film called The Woman King um, that I am so excited for everyone to see that I shot in South Africa, kind of end of last year, start of this year. Historical, epic, drama, action, everything. Um, and I'm in I'm amongst the most incredible cast that with John Boyega, Lashana Lynch, Sheila Atim, uh, Viola Davis, wow. a bunch of other incredible people too. So they do. Uh, and I can't wait for everyone to see that. I'm, I'm really excited. I had a great time filming it. And again, not a romance. So here we go. Amazing. <laughs> Piero, thank you so much for joining yes, us. We really appreciate you. it. And we hope you get to chat again soon. Yes. And go get the yeah, sunlight. Yeah, I, I, thank you. I'm going to chase it. I'm going to run down the road to catch it. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but no, I've really enjoyed the format of this. And it's nice and that conversational. And, you know, I really enjoyed it. So thank you, you guys. Great. It. Well, you yes, can come back really anytime. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'd love to. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Make sure you are watching our vlogs on YouTube. The new one is out now, Stop 3 San Francisco. And we will talk to you guys on Wednesday. We love you guys.